Years ago, I worked at a local casino. A lot of customers could be kind of weird, but this one guy in particular, who spent a lot of time flirting with me, seemed alright. So I agreed to go on a date with him that upcoming weekend. We met earlier on a Saturday night at his friend's house for a casual barbecue. Everything seemed nice, food was decent, but I did notice my date taking an obscene amount of jello shots. Later, we all agreed to go to a bar and hang out. My first red flag should have been the fact that my date tried to force French kiss me and stuck his tongue down my throat. Stupid me, blamed it on alcohol. I know, I know, but I was young, insecure, and just didn't read the situation well at the time. We get to the local bar, and all was okay until they invited me to another party that would take place a few days later. I had other plans, so I politely declined. My date's mood immediately changed, and he became very hostile and angry. Within seconds, he began yelling at me, telling me that I was a whore, and that he knew what whores like me did at other parties. I was completely baffled. He kept screaming and becoming more violent and went on and on about how inappropriate it was for me to decline his invite and how I was just trying to fuck other guys. At this point, I started to freak out and decided to leave. He followed me out into the parking lot where he proceeded to yell more obscenities. I told him that I was not going to talk to him anymore and tried to get in my car. Then things got worse. He suddenly grabbed me by my shoulder and shoved me into the side of my car. Then he took one hand and grabbed me by my neck. While still yelling, he attempted to choke me and called me a whole mess of more bad words. I screamed and told him that he was hurting me and that I would call the cops if he didn't immediately let me go. I was actually amazed that he backed off. I jumped into my car and drove away as fast as I could. I can easily say that I've never been more frightened in my life. The next day at work, I immediately went to the security officers, which were run by the state troopers, and reported the assault to the officers. Since this guy was a regular visitor at the casino, I was not going to take any chances of running into him again. They pulled up his long criminal record and lo and behold, charge after charge of assault, stalking, and even kidnapping. I completely freaked out. They put him on a blacklist, and when he showed up at the casino a few days later, he was arrested and forbidden to come there ever again. Unfortunately, a few days later, I found out from some of my female co-workers that they knew he was crazy and had a history, but they didn't want to tell me because I was a new girl and would figure it out myself. I was livid and felt totally betrayed. Not only that, but I was paranoid that he would come back after me because I had him banned from the premises. He was consistently calling and texting me, leaving threatening voicemails on my phone that lasted almost a year. And it gets worse. Less than two weeks after this, another girl I worked with ended up getting kidnapped by another regular. She was not so lucky and was held hostage for three days in this dude's basement. He had been coaxing her and gaining her trust for two years. Luckily, she was found and recovered well. As soon as I found out, I quit and walked out, never been back, and will never set foot into another casino. Edit, thank you for all the kind words and responses to this. I've been waiting to share this for a while. It definitely helps to write it out and reflect. All I know is many years later, look out for another and stand up for what is right. You just never know. So about seven years ago, I had an online date who after I told him a second date wouldn't happen, decided to show up at my place of work. Needless to say, I was extremely hesitant to dive back into the pool of online dating. In fact, since then I can count on one hand the number of men I've dated from online. But my sister and best friend have both met men over the last year on the app that connects through Facebook. It's used to help filter out catfishes and also tries to find mutual friends of friends that would match what you're looking in for a partner. 
So over the last month, I've been talking to guys here and there, but hadn't actually found one I was ready to move beyond text with. Then this guy came along. We chatted in the app and he was really nice and seemed safe. After almost three weeks of daily texting, I agreed to a date. For the first time ever, I did not stalk his social media profile because I wanted to stop self-sabotaging. I tend to dig so deep that I know too much before the date and have already made my decision that there will be no second date. Yes, I'm extremely paranoid. So I show up to the first date and it's okay. He's mostly quiet and kind of shy, but polite. I know I have a big personality and can dominate conversations, so I decide to give him a second shot. As the week leading up to date two goes on, I start getting apprehensive and tell myself not to sabotage this. I realized because I didn't want to stalk his profile, I didn't know his last name, so I text him and ask. He seems hesitant to tell me. He asked me why I need to know, so I respond jokingly that I typically ask before the first date so I can know who my murderer is, but we're beyond that, so now I simply want to know who I'm dating. It takes him a while to respond, but he sends it finally, and then doesn't text again for a while. I keep my promise to myself and don't social media stalk him. I tell some of my friends who start to seem hesitant about me seeing him again. Date 2. I show up to the restaurant, my choice, and it's pretty empty so there's plenty of parking right up front. I park and wait. I see another car pull in. He drives past all the open spots, my car included, which he knows because he walked me out after the first date. He parks over at the side of the building, gets out, walks past my car, and texts me that he saw me in the lot. It seemed a little awkward, but I ignored it. We enjoy the date and spend an hour and a half talking until the restaurant closes. We discussed where in the city we live, general direction, and the fact that we lived in those areas our entire lives. We also discuss social media and he claims to not have a social media account. This should have been a red flag since the app takes place on Facebook. Although the conversation was much better, I wasn't sure if I was ready to tell him I wanted to see him again, so I figured I would just go home and think about it. He walks me to my car but walks uncomfortably close behind me. I ignore this and turn to give him an awkward hug and said goodbye. I don't open my car until he walked away. I leave and get out on the road and head home. There aren't many cars in the area as it's a heavily restaurant laden area and most are closing for the night. I get to the main road I need to turn down to go to the direction I live in and I notice a car behind me also gets in the turning lane. At that time, I wasn't going home because I was going to make a quick stop at the grocery store to grab some items I needed for dinner the following night. The light turns red and they sit extremely far back. I look in the mirror and I realize it's him. No big deal. I'm sure it's just a coincidence that he's going this way. There are other stores this way as well. I refuse to become paranoid and overthink things. So I get to the intersection that the store is at and note that he's still in the far lane. So I hop in the left hand lane to turn into the store and notice he cuts over two lanes to get behind me. That seemed odd, but maybe he just didn't know where the entrance to the shopping center was. Still really odd coincidence that he'd be coming this way, especially without sending a text or something, acknowledging that he was behind me when we were the only two cars on the road. I pull into the store and note that he pulls into a row before I do and decide to loop around and pull back out onto the service road. I slowly drive back onto the main road, noticing he gets out of his car and scans the parking lot. Not a casual scan like, is there a better parking spot, but a prolonged, where are you scan. I get back out on the road and drive all the way to another out of the way grocery store that I actually used to work at knowing it's a safe place and in a more heavily populated end of the town with some friends who will be there to make sure I feel safe. Needless to say, I haven't heard from him since and I think he knows I know. It took me a while, but I found his social media. 
His first name was not what he told me. I dug through my text with him until I found a screenshot that he sent me of an Instagram page which listed mutual followers. Another red flag, I should have remembered that he obviously had an Insta. I started digging through the accounts listed until I found one that's not private and finds his profile. This leads to the ability to reverse Google image until I found his Facebook, which has a different first name and city that is nowhere near where he claimed to live. Time to delete my dating profile again. The story takes place when I was 19 years old. At the time, I was dating a guy, 19 male, and had been for only a couple of months. My parents had left on a trip to visit family in the United States. I grew up in Mexico. I decided to sneak my then boyfriend into my house and spend the weekend with me while they were gone. I never would have expected what happened. My parents had left me their car and my boyfriend used to be a professional level bodybuilder and trainer and knew a lot of shady people. One night he tells me this friend wants to meet up in the city an hour's drive from the town we lived in. As I was the one with the car, I was down to drive him and meet his friend. We meet in a shady bar in a so-so part of the city. I was instantly uncomfortable with this guy. He was too familiar, too comfortable, too obnoxious to everyone, myself included. All of a sudden, after a private talk outside between him and my boyfriend, my boyfriend, who I'll call A, approaches me and says that we need to give him a ride back to my place. I'm sorry, I'm not comfortable with this. He was a bit nervous and tells me, quietly, to hush. This isn't someone that we could afford to offend. I asked him why he can't drive, to which he told me he's too intoxicated and needed a private setting to talk to him. As dumb as I was, I ended up agreeing. I was very uncomfortable and had this terrible feeling the whole way home, which my boyfriend drove. We get home, they sit outside, and suddenly this man starts demanding I cook him dinner. I was a very obstinate teen. I hated and still do being told what to do. As I begin to deny him, A looks at me, a bit pale, and shakes his head. I go in, fuming at the order and feeling bossed around in my own home and make a simple dinner. After the dude left, I learned from my boyfriend that he was the head narco of our city. I mean, the head honcho. I was livid that he brought this guy to my family's home. He was very pushy and without words, slightly threatening, so I very much feel like I had made a mistake. It very well could have ended terribly for me. My wife passed away after many years of battling an awful disease. We were married for 13 years, and after several months of not being able to find my footing, I made the decision to move out of state and start a new chapter to force myself into beginning a new life. I was immediately validated by starting my first job in over 8 years. Things slowly began moving forward, and after prodding from my friends, I signed up for a mobile dating app. I met a couple of people I didn't really have a lot of chemistry with. The first date I went on was cordial, but not of any consequences. She wound up asking me to fix a laptop she had. The second person I met called me and we decided to meet for Chinese food. Since I don't have a car, I walked about 5 or 6 blocks, but not before it started to rain. She had already sat at a table and was waiting for me to arrive. We exchanged pleasantries, and soon it's all about her divorce and why she lost her kids and all the legal proceedings of her case. And then she would pause, clap my hand on the table, turn her head, lean in a bit and say, But nothing compared to what you went through. Tell me about your dead wife. Like clockwork, she would ramble on about the craziest stuff, about how they're all trying to get her. And then she stops the crazy babbling to ask me details about how bad it felt and my poor wife's decline in condition. I had only put on my profile that I was a widower, nothing else. It was at that point that I got seriously weirded out, deep in my gut, fully weirded out. 
What I couldn't figure out was if she was trying to mimic what she thought a sensitive person would be like, or was there a possibility that she wanted to know those painful graphic details for other perverted reasons and made short work of the entree and paid the entire check. She called me on my phone a few times and I made several excuses why I was unable to meet again. I got a couple of calls from a blocked number that didn't say anything, but they stopped after a month or two. I'm blessed and remarried, but I'm so grateful I noped the F out that night and never messed with that lady again. This happened back in March. I met this guy on a dating site, and let's just call him Jay for the rest of the story. Anyway, we chatted for a while on the site and exchanged numbers and chatted for about a week or two until he asked me out. Even before we met up, he just gave a creepy vibe and was asking some really weird and sexual questions. But I'm the type of person who gives people chances. Anyway, the day of the date and from the moment we met at the Starbucks, it went downhill from there. He was very creepy and trying to touch or hold my hand, asking me strange questions and just making me feel uncomfortable saying that he was going to take me on vacation and that we were going to have a blast. In my mind, this dude had lost his marbles. I kept looking down on my phone to see if my cousin was on her way. She was my left home, but there was no text. At that point, he was like, why don't you sit in my car? I was looking at him like, what the fuck is wrong with this guy? So I responded, I don't think so. Thankfully, my cousin texted me that she was outside, so I told him. He was like, oh, I cleaned out my car and was going to give you a lift home. I didn't say anything to him on our way out. We just stood there and he tried to come closer to me. I asked him, what are you doing? And he's like, I was going to kiss you. Anyway, I said bye to him and get into my cousin's car. And her son is in the backseat and he's 11 years old. He goes to his car and my cousin takes off and next thing you know, my cousin turns around and says he's following our car. I started to panic for a moment, but my cousin kept going down the street. I told her to turn to a gas station and see if he keeps following us in there or if he keeps going straight. Thankfully, he kept going straight. Anyways, everything was okay after that and I never went out with him again. So this happened a few weeks back. As I'm sure most of you know, Facebook now has a dating component to it. I was matched with this guy who seemed pretty chill. He was older than me, 27, and I had just turned 23. But in my mind, four years age difference isn't really a big deal. We talked for a day or two and decided that we would meet up for a drink and get a feel for each other in person. When we met face to face, he looked older than just 27. He had quite a bit of gray mixed into his facial hair, but I figured it might just be one of those people whose hair turns gray earlier in life. No big deal. We have a few drinks and chatted for a bit. He again states that he's 27. He was nice, but he wouldn't stop staring at me and was feeding me compliments with every other sentence that came out of his mouth. I was flattered he was saying those things, but naturally it made me uncomfortable. I decided it was time for me to head out shortly after that since I had to be at work at 4.30 in the morning. He walked me to my car and we started discussing his. It caught my attention due to the fact that it was a 1970 Camaro. He then offered to take me for a drive in it at 10pm. I declined due to the time and the fact that I had only known him for less than 2 hours and he wants me to get into a car and go to a random drive at night. That wasn't going to happen. I really enjoy watching documentaries about serial killers, reading creepy encounters, and let's not meet stories. The last thing I was about to do was get into a vehicle with an unfamiliar man who will take me god knows where. I know what kind of danger that can subject a person to. He was very persistent about it, but I wouldn't budge. So I got into my car and left for my drive home, which was about a 45 minute long drive. By the time I got home, I received multiple texts from him, probably at least 15. 
most of those texts stating about how he already missed me, wants to build a future with me, how he's never fallen this fast for anyone in his 38 years of life, continuing with further compliments. That's when my stomach dropped. He just stated that he's 38 years old. That's not what I was told at the bar or what's on his profile. I replied to him, inquiring whether or not it bothered him that he was 15 years older than me. It bothered me for damn sure. He states that it didn't and that he prefers to date younger women around my age. I didn't respond and went to bed. When I woke up the next morning, I had multiple texts and five missed calls, voicemails from the dude. Not gonna lie, I straight up ghosted him and blocked him from every form of social media I had as well as his phone number, which is a real asshole thing on my part but he really creeped me out. He was super charming, but way too pushy and was giving me some Ted Bundy vibes. So shout out to Facebook for introducing me to the creepiest person I have ever gone on a date with. Hey guys, I need some advice. For about three months, I've been experiencing hacking from what I assume to be another tenant in my building. It began with hacking my Bluetooth speaker. I would be listening to something while doing some housework and the next thing I would know is my device would be disconnected and the hacker would start playing some very creepy and inappropriate music via the speaker. The main song that would play is Fucked With An Anchor by Ailstorm, a song that I never heard until this. If you choose to listen to the song, you will see why this immediately freaked me out. I would try everything I could to turn it off, but they would put the volume on full blast, playing it over and over again. This happened on two separate occasions. After this, I stopped using my Bluetooth speaker to prevent this from happening again, until they hacked into my PlayStation and began playing the same song, again on full volume, and continued to play after I tried to press pause or exit the music app. I then unplugged my PlayStation and I have not used it since. Finally, yesterday, I had asked Google a question via my Google Nest device, and straight after, I heard a ding on the device signaling someone else was controlling it, which is only possible if I grant access, also the case with all the other devices they hacked so far. Straight after the ding, the hacker started playing the creepy music again. Different from last time, it was an old song with a very creepy undertone and the only words I can remember is, times are getting hard boy. I straight away unplugged my device to stop the music and I have stopped using the device altogether. The reason this had me freaked out more than the last few times is the fact I was on the phone with a friend at the time talking about some personal things I had going on. Therefore, I believe the hacker is able to hear me. I'm unsure whether this is due to him being a direct neighbor of mine or whether they hacked my devices to listen to me. I'm completely stumped with what to do now as I've contacted my landlord and all he said was that he would send a warning email to all the tenants but I need to contact my internet provider for further action. I should have mentioned this earlier but I live in a student accommodation and to make it cheaper everyone uses the same Wi-Fi, but I have separate logins so the reason it's so easy for them to hack into my devices is due to using the same Wi-Fi. I then contacted the internet provider and they said they can't do anything about it. I don't know what to do anymore. I have now had to forfeit the use of three separate devices to ensure this stops happening, but they continue to find a way to hack me. I feel incredibly unsafe and uneasy in my apartment, becoming paranoid someone is listening to me or watching me. I feel as if I'm going crazy. So please, give me advice. My roommate, Emma, had been swiping through Tinder for weeks. She was hoping to find someone interesting and genuine to go on a date with. Finally, she matched with a guy named Mark. After a few days of messaging back and forth, they agreed to meet up at a trendy bar downtown. The evening started out well, with Mark greeting her with a smile and compliment. They ordered drinks and started chatting, sharing stories, and laughing together. Emma told me that she felt at ease and enjoyed Mark's company, finding him charming and attractive. But as the night went on, Emma started noticing things that made her uncomfortable. Mark would occasionally touch her arm or shoulder without her permission, 
and he seemed to be drinking much more than she was. He also started talking about himself more and asking fewer questions about her. Despite these red flags, Emma decided to give him the benefit of the doubt and agreed to go to another bar with him. Once they got there, Mark suggested that they go to a secluded area outside and talk privately. Emma hesitated for a moment, but Mark assured her that she was safe and she reluctantly agreed. As they sat down, Mark leaned in and tried to kiss her. Emma pulled away, telling him that she wasn't ready for that yet, but Mark persisted. His demeanor suddenly became aggressive and intimidating. She felt trapped and vulnerable. She told me that she realized it was too late, that she had already put herself in a dangerous situation. Luckily, she managed to escape from Mark and quickly left the bar, but the fear and anxiety stayed with her long after the day ended. She couldn't shake the feeling that she had narrowly avoided a dangerous situation and vowed to be more cautious when meeting strangers from dating apps. It's important to remember that meeting someone from a dating app can be risky and it's crucial to take the necessary precautions to ensure your safety. Always meet in a public place, let someone know where you will be, and trust your instincts if something feels off. Emma is now dating a guy named Brad and they seem good together and I'm glad she won't have to go on another date from a dating site. I had been using Tinder for a few months and had gone on a few successful dates, so when I matched with Josh, I thought nothing of it. He seemed charming and funny in his profile, and we hit it off immediately. After a few days of messaging back and forth, he asked me on a date to a local coffee shop. When I arrived, Josh was already there waiting for me, and he looked just like he did in his pictures. We ordered our drinks and started talking. He seemed interested in me and was asking me a lot of questions about my life, which I appreciated. I felt like we had a real connection and we talked for hours. As the evening wore on, he suggested that we go to a nearby park to walk and continue our conversation. I hesitated at first, but he seemed trustworthy, so I agreed. The park was quiet and peaceful and we talked and laughed as we strolled along the paths. Suddenly, he stopped walking and turned to face me. He had a strange look in his eyes. As I felt a little pang of fear in my chest, without warning, he lunged at me, grabbing me by my arms and pinning me on the ground. I struggled to break free, but he was too strong. I screamed for help, but there was no one around to hear me. His grip tightened, and I could feel his breath on my face as he leaned in closer. I was terrified and thought I was going to die. But suddenly, he stopped and just let me go. I I'm sorry, he said, his voice shaking. I don't know what came over me. I scrambled to my feet, my heart racing. I didn't know what to do or say. I just wanted to get away from him as quickly as possible. I ran to my car and drove home, shaking and crying the entire way. I reported the incident to the police and they arrested Josh a few days later. It turns out that he had a history of violent behavior and had been stalking me for weeks before our date. I was lucky to have escaped with my life and I'm never using Tinder again. This experience left me traumatized and scared and I knew I couldn't take any more risks with my safety. I had been using plenty of fish for a while and I had gone on a few decent dates, but nothing had really clicked yet. So when I got a message from Mike, I was excited. He seemed like the perfect guy, charming, funny, and we had a lot in common. We chatted for a few days and decided to meet up for drinks at a bar near my house. When I arrived, Mike was already there, talking to a few guys at the bar. We got a table off to the side and we ordered drinks and started talking. He seemed interested in me and was asking me the basic questions you ask on a first date. Felt like we had a real connection and our similarities were really crazy. As the night went on, Mike became increasingly flirtatious and touchy-feely. I was enjoying his company, but I started to feel a little uncomfortable with how much he was invading my personal space. When he suggested we go back to his place, I thought about it for a few minutes, but he was so charming I eventually agreed. 
We took an Uber to his apartment and things quickly escalated. We started making out on the couch, but then he became very forceful and began touching me in ways that I didn't want. I told him to stop, but he wasn't listening. I tried to push him away, but he was too strong. I started to panic and wondering how I was going to get out of the situation. Finally, I managed to break free and ran out of his apartment as fast as I could. I felt violated and shaken and knew I had to call the police and file a report. I called them right away and gave them Mike's information. A few days later, I found out that Mike had a history of sexual assault and had been in prison before. I was horrified and grateful that I had gotten away from him before anything worse could happen. This experience has scared me and traumatized me enough that I will never use any online dating again. Just because someone seems perfect online, it doesn't mean that they're a safe person. Every once in a while the thought pops into my mind and I realize how stupid I was and how much worse things could have been. Ladies, be safe out there. I'd been using social media for years and thought I was pretty savvy when it came to online interaction. So when I started talking to someone on Instagram who seemed like the perfect guy, handsome, successful, and just smooth, I was excited. We chatted for weeks and quickly became close. But as time went on, I started to notice some inconsistencies in his stories. He would tell me all about his job one day and then change his story the next. He also refused to video chat with me or meet in person, citing work obligations and travel. I started to feel like something was off, but I was so invested in our conversations that I ignored the red flags. One day, he finally revealed to me that he had been using someone else's picture and identity to talk to me. He was actually a woman who had been pretending to be a man for months. I was shocked and hurt. I couldn't believe I had been fooled by this person. The woman then revealed that she developed real feelings for me and wanted to continue talking, even though she lied to me about who she was. I felt manipulated. I didn't want anything to do with her and cut off all communication. The story doesn't end there. Over the next few weeks, I started to receive messages from unknown accounts. They were threatening and aggressive and I didn't know where they were coming from. I eventually discovered that the woman had been using multiple fake accounts to harass me and tried to get me to talk to her again. I was so scared and didn't know what to do. I didn't want to involve the police, but I also didn't know how to make it stop. It took weeks of blocking and reporting the accounts before the messages finally stopped. This experience left me feeling empty and scared. I realized that even though I was careful online, I could still be taken advantage of by someone who had skills in manipulation. After this happened, I deleted my Instagram and I have no interest in being online anymore, which is a good thing because I have a full-time job and going to school. So I guess there's that. So a few days back, I went to a mall a bit far from the house, and things were really going good for the day, but then I was at the KFC in there. Someone on Grindr with a blank profile messaged me while waiting for my food. I shrugged it off, and he didn't send me any pictures, just a message saying hi to me, and asked me if he'd give me the best blowjob I would ever have. Seeing that I'm in a public place and absolutely do not have the mood to be horny, I didn't reply and proceeded to eat my meal. After eating, I left the mall while bringing the items I bought from there and waited for a ride to go home. It was dark around 8 p.m. so I had to be vigilant on my surroundings. While looking out on the road, the same guy messaged me and asked me where I was currently. I saw his distance from me was only 70 meters away, 230 feet from where I was standing. This is getting a bit worse, so I closed the app immediately and proceeded to continue ignoring him. Around 5 minutes later, a guy stood beside me trying to act unsuspicious, even though my gut feeling was telling me something's wrong with him. He looked like he was in his late 30s. I'm 18 by the way. He was a bit bigger than me, both height and weight. I started to have goosebumps while standing next to him, 
and it only got worse when he tapped my shoulder and asked if he could suck my dick off. I froze, having no idea what to do, while extremely anxious. But then I suddenly punched him in the face when he started to grab my crotch and tried to unbutton my pants. I then pushed him off of me hard enough that he laid on the ground and I tried to run as far as I could. I then saw him chasing me afterwards. Luckily, a taxi drove nearby and I rushed inside as fast as I could. I knew that he had to be the guy that was spamming me messages on Grindr because his Grindr profile tells me that he was literally one meter away from me. I blocked their profile and logged out of the app. What I realized is I wasn't logged out at the time, therefore my location was exposed and I have a profile picture on the app with my face, meaning it was easy for me to be identified there. Also, the location of the mall is shitty and there isn't a ton of lights around. It's surrounded by shitty looking houses and roads. Worse, there wasn't much people around where I stood at the time and it was also very dark, meaning I wasn't able to identify the man correctly to report him to the local authorities. I joined a Facebook group where people would post ads for butchering equipment I had this old meat slicer that was no longer in use. As I was getting ready for work one morning, I got a message. It was around 6.20 a.m., but that didn't seem to bother this very passionate potential buyer. He asked a few questions about the meat slicer and seemed to be frantic, like his life depended on this machine. He requested a video call a few times to make sure the machine was working properly, which I rejected as I was getting ready for work. Then he found another ad I posted, an old typewriter. Apparently, he was also interested in that. He asked me about the price, if it was functional, etc. Standard questions. We had texted for about 20 minutes when he asked if he could call me to seal the deal. I gave him my number, to which he said, I can't call you. We're not on the same network. Can I call you on Facebook Messenger instead? So he did. I picked up and asked if he could hear me. No response. I looked at the screen and, well, let's just say I found it impressive that someone managed to participate in a semi-normal conversation and buying butchering equipment and a typewriter at 6.40 a.m. while jerking off. Back in 2019, I was 18 and decided to download Tinder a few months after a rough breakup. I was very inexperienced with dating and pretty shy, so it seemed unlikely that I'd meet a potential partner in person. Anyway, after a few matches that led to nothing, I came across this profile of someone that I found very attractive, 21 male. We matched, exchanged Snapchats, and continued to set up a date. Our first date was relatively normal, enjoyable. We saw a movie and at the end of it, it felt like we were hitting it off. However, our relationship was extremely short-lived. Not long after I agreed to be his girlfriend, after about a month of going out, he began to behave very erratically and would sometimes fall completely silent in the middle of a conversation. Ignoring me when I asked him what was wrong, he became hot-tempered slamming doors and speeding on the road when he was mad. I started to feel really uncomfortable about our relationship. This went on for about a week until one night when we were on our way to have dinner downtown. He fell silent mid-conversation. I became extremely anxious as he pulled into a nearby parking garage, wondering what I had done to upset him. As soon as we parked, I decided to ask him what was wrong. He did not answer. When I asked him again, he shouted at me, Shut the fuck up! I was completely frozen for a moment, but I finally got the courage to tell him that we were done, gathered my belongings from the car, and walked over to the nearest coffee shop to call an Uber. It was fairly late at night, so I walked as fast as I could, hoping that he wouldn't follow me. When I made it to the shop, I noticed I had several missed calls from him. When I made it home that night, I blocked him on all social media and decided to never contact him again. I'm fairly familiar with the dynamic of toxic relationships and I knew that if he could talk to me that way, completely unprompted, it was likely that he was capable of much more. 
About a week goes by as I start to settle my emotions a bit. I decide to confide in a friend who my ex had never met, telling what happened, feeling completely embarrassed. A few nights later, I received a text from the same friend. It was a screenshot of an Instagram DM from someone she didn't follow, my now ex. It said something to the effect of, Hey, sorry we have to meet like this, but Stacy is ignoring me and I need to talk to her. My heart sank. I decided to message all my friends separately and let them know what happened just in case. Later that week, I started receiving several DMs from various accounts, all without profile pictures or posts. Eventually, I gave in and responded to one, asserting that my relationship was over and that I didn't want to hear from him again. I blocked the account immediately afterwards. As time went on without hearing a word in weeks, I figured I had reached the end of the situation. Until one morning, while I walked to my car, I noticed something dangling around the handle of my car. It was a necklace I gave him. He had only picked me up once from my house before. The thought of him driving to my house earlier that night freaked me out. He lived about a half hour away. I was shaken up for a while. It was by no means an expensive necklace, and I had the same exact one. I thought maybe it was his way of acknowledging that we were done. Two months later, I was working my job at a small boutique near my house. I was used to answering the phone several times a day, so when the phone rang, I thought nothing of it. But when I picked up, I immediately recognized his voice. He started rambling about wanting his sweatshirt back, but I hung up before he could finish. That was the last time I would ever tell someone I was dating where I worked. I was completely losing it at this point, especially considering he had never called me at work while we were together. I didn't even know how he knew I was working that day and time. I told my sister about the situation and she, being very protective, decided to message him herself. She told him to leave me alone and even offered to give him back the sweatshirt for me. He refused and insisted on meeting up with me in person to get it. When it became abundantly clear that he didn't actually want the sweatshirt back, she threatened him with a personal protection order, to which he never responded. That was the last time I heard from him. We've all had bad dates, right? This is the only date I've had so far that rang every alarm bell and waved every red flag. I'll preface this by saying that I didn't go on many dates, but when I do, I make sure to follow safety protocols by only meeting my date in public places, let either my family or friends know where I'm going, and park in the populated place close by to wherever we meet. Anyway, this date initially suggested that we meet at his house to watch a movie and have a few drinks. I said no, that I don't feel comfortable with that, and I only want to meet in public. He seemed okay with this, but then he brought it up a few more times, and I said if money is an issue, we can meet up another time, or forget it altogether. My date backtracked, and we went with my idea of meeting at a cafe that I chose. Anyway, he turns up in a two-door car, this detail is relevant, and goes into the cafe, and I follow behind and introduce myself. After a polite introduction, things begin to get weird. I order a coke and he says, Don't you want a drink? I was going to pop into the bar and get one. Which is connected to the cafe. I say no, I'm not drinking. And he looks at me like, what the fuck? As if I'm being unreasonable. I already explained in messages that I don't drink as I'm on medication. So having to re-explain it again pissed me off. He seemed disappointed and goes to order cider from the bar while I get a table. Anyway, we sit down with our drinks and my date immediately goes on about going back to his place again. Even though the original plan was to stay here and order food and I already stated that that was not happening. He says something along the lines of having a few drinks and eating at his place. And I said, we don't have to eat, we can just have drinks and leave. He gets defensive and says that he has money, but prefers if we go back to his place. I make a joke and say, You're not a killer, are you? And instead of laughing it off, he stares at me uncannily and says, You don't think I would hurt you, do you? I laugh uncomfortably and say of course not, 
but really I'm relieved that this date won't be going on any further. My date suddenly says, are you going to follow me in your car because that wouldn't make sense. How about we go in my car, but I got packages in the front so you have to squeeze in the back and I'll drop you back off at your car later. In reality, that made less sense than me following in his car and driving home from his house. The fact that it was completely illogical made it even more creepy in my mind. Every alarm bell was going off at this point. I said, look, I don't want to go to yours, and your insistence is giving me the creeps. My date looks shocked, mumbles something about needing to go to the toilet, and excuses himself from the table. A few minutes later, I see him through the cafe window, getting into his car and driving off. Massive bullet dodged, in my opinion. Also, the fact that the car didn't have doors in the back made it even more sinister because imagine if something happened in the car and I couldn't escape. So there's this friend that I've never met but played several rounds of games together for weeks. I know the state they live in, etc. So during this game, it seemed like he was on the phone with someone. The person on the phone then somehow sends my last name to my friend. My friend seemed confused and kept spelling out my last name. Now, my last name is extremely unique and he seemed confused. I at first ignored it because I couldn't hear him until I finally realized what he was saying when I spelt it out. Sort of creepy, but not too creepy. However, later during the game, he mentions that the other person who was either on a call or text message sent him a picture of a girl and asked if she was pretty. It was my photo. He kept begging my friend to click the website I used before. It was just a poem site that I used to post my school stuff to. Now super creeped out, I tell my friend to block him and point out how creepy this was. My username for the game is related to my Instagram I use. However, if you search my username itself, it doesn't pop up first on the list or even photos related to me aren't the first photos you find when you Google the images. So it's super creepy and weird. When they are online, I plan to confront them. America Online was a big thing when I was 13. Or in other words, for my generation, AIM, which stood for, you guessed it, AOL Instant Messenger. It was around 2002 and I would have been around 13 and in the 8th grade. I had many times went into chat rooms by myself or with friends goofing around. Unfortunately, unsolicited photos was a thing back then too, but usually you could stay clear of it by the chat room you entered. I didn't have any photos of myself and back then you had to take a digital photo and upload it from your camera. Plus I was 13, self-conscious, which I'm sure anyone can relate with. But one day a guy popped up in my screen wanting to chat. It went fine at first. I was very naive back then and we quickly fell into a pattern of talking. His name was Dave and he lived in California. Eventually he told me that he loved me, etc. But the problem was he was 19. Now I wasn't proud of this, but at first at 13 I just sent pictures of some random girl and said it was me. He instantly fell for me, telling me age is just a number and how mature I was. Now at this point, he did not live in state, so there was never really a chance of us meeting. Eventually, he told me that he and his mom were moving up to the city, which was about an hour and a half away from me. He started begging me to see him, and he'd go to a movie, anything. I had to break the catfishing truth and say that those were not my pictures, but someone else. He was furious. He had been looking forward to a different type of child this whole time. Dave forgave me a few days later, saying, I still want to meet you because I love you. All the things you would say to a young girl to get her to swoon. I think back and I'm like, wow, I was 13. So I told my best friend everything and I wanted her to go with me to meet him. There was a whole plan of him driving to see me and going to the movies to finally meet what I thought was the love of my life. I had been brainwashed into believing this was normal. I didn't tell my mom of course, and honestly, she didn't notice any of it. She was never too involved if you catch my drift. 
So on the day that my friend and I were going to meet up with Dave, her mom came and picked us up from school. She said something that made my stomach drop into nothingness. She said, Chrissy, you're not going to the movies. You're not going to meet that man. You're going to get seriously hurt or kidnapped, and I can't allow you guys to go. I cried and cried because I honestly thought I could handle everything, and everything would be fine. She told me that she wasn't going to tell her mom. I promised to never speak to him again and never plan to meet a stranger online. He ended up showing up and was upset that I wasn't there. He went on aim, flying off the handle like I hadn't seen at that age. It scared me how close I was to this man being near me. I never talked to Dave again, but I easily believed that I would have been kidnapped or worse that day if my best friend's mom hadn't stepped in. My mom would have been none the wiser, and I was none the wiser. But I'm here today and learned a dire lesson. No one is what they seem, and make sure you keep your kids close. Last week, I matched with this girl on Tinder. She was cute and we got along fairly well. I decided to go for it and asked her to meet up on Saturday. She said yes. I suggested to drive around town, but she insisted that we go over to her place instead. Without much thought, I agreed. I arrived around 9pm. This was about 20 minutes from town. The house seemed very unkempt, but I didn't think anything of it since there were many old houses in the area. There was only one streetlight near her house, and I parked near it. I texted her, letting her know that I was there, and she hearted the message. I knocked a few times, but there was no answer. I tried calling, but again, no answer. I then texted her that I was leaving, and I walked back to my car. Once inside, I saw messages asking where I was going, and to come back. I saw someone standing on the porch, but not from her house. It was from the house next door. They weren't there before I arrived, and that shadowy figure was not the petite young girl. It seemed bulkier like a man. I freaked out a little and left. When I got back home, I saw that the profile had been deleted. I don't know what to think of it. It still gives me the creeps. I downloaded dating apps the past two years hoping to find the one from all over the world. It wasn't my idea at first to download it, but was my best friend's. So I did because I was desperate at the time since most of my friends were getting into relationships. I matched with a couple of guys on Tinder and some added me on Yobo and LitMatch. Some of them were just looking for a hookup or for nudes, so I stopped replying to them. Then there's this guy who was attractive and kind at the same time, at first. We got close and had going on contacting each other for almost two months. It got to the point where he asked me to be his girlfriend. I told him and explained that I think it's difficult at this point because he was still in college and I was in my senior year in high school. I admit I really wanted that to work, but I think it's a rush decision. So I told him we could still be friends and when the time and situation is right, we could be together. I wanted to be in a relationship so bad, but two months since knowing each other is too early for me. He said he respects my decision, but he can't remain friends. I was sad, but I didn't want to force him to stay. So I moved on and I decided to stop and delete those dating apps because I'm easily attached. We hadn't talked to each other for almost a month, so I really thought he was really serious with moving on. A few weeks later, I saw his account viewing my stories on Instagram, so I was like, okay, maybe he was just checking if I was okay, and it went on for almost six months. He'd be the first to view it. I decided to lock my profile because I was getting uncomfortable, and then I blocked his account. The next day, a new account requested to follow me, zero followers, and two or three following. I was getting a vibe that it was his, so I declined. Same goes on with my Twitter, Snapchat, and Facebook. Anonymous accounts would follow me or add me and message me randomly. I started to get scared. I unblocked his account that I knew of and saw that he was following most of my friends, including my sisters. 
There's this one friend I have that messaged me that someone sent him a screenshot of our convo. So he asked me if I knew him. It was getting really awkward and scary. So I asked him to block that account. I also told my other friends. One of my friends sent me a screenshot because a certain account posted a picture of me. When I saw it, it was me when both of us were on a video call. I felt cold and getting sick to my stomach. It's so fucking weird. I messaged him and told him to stop stalking me and posting my pictures. He didn't reply or anything. He did stop posting me, but until now, anonymous accounts are still following me on social media. Could I have possibly befriended a psycho or am I just overreacting? In 2019, I was just 15 years old and in high school. At one point, I received a request to follow on Instagram from a 25 year old guy. He was not a stranger as he attended the same church as my family, but we weren't even friends. I only saw him once or twice and we never spoke. I was even surprised that he knew my name because even I didn't know his name until that moment. He always liked my photos, replied to my stories with compliments, but I always tried to ignore it as much as I could. Or sometimes I would just say, thank you, and completely ignore any attempt for him to try to build a conversation. Till one day he sent me DMs saying that he would like to get to know me better and he would like to take me out for dinner or something. I obviously declined and I was quite honest with him and said that it would never work since I was underage and that he should go look for someone his age. At the moment, I didn't want to sound rude as there was a high possibility of meeting him in church again and I wouldn't want to cause a strange atmosphere. That's why I didn't block him the first moment. After that, he seemed to be quiet until the day I made a post with my friends at school. We took a photo in the classroom and I made a big mistake of tagging the location in the photo, the location of my school. Minutes after that, he sent me a DM saying, Oh, I live very close to your school. I think about only five to seven minutes away. I didn't answer. At the moment, it didn't cross my mind that this is a risk I could be taking. That same day, he continued to ask me if I would like to hang out with him after school and that he could take me to lunch. And once again, I politely declined. I was getting annoyed by this point. My parents weren't enjoying the situation either and told me that they wanted to confront him about it but I didn't want any problems or being a target of comments in church as gossip often spreads quickly over there. I believe that ignoring it was the best way, but it wasn't. The next day, our biology teacher had to leave school due to an emergency, so we had the last class time vacant. My friends and I took our bags and went to the top floor of school where we had a complete view of the school entrance. We stood there watching the street movement while we talked. That's when I noticed a man leaning against a silver car in a more secluded corner of the street, but I could see perfectly who it was. At first, I didn't believe it, so I went on his Instagram profile because I had remembered that he had some pictures with his car in it. I just wanted to make sure that it was the same one that I was seeing. To my misfortune, it was the same car. So I took my phone and zoomed in on the face and had confirmation of what I already knew. It was him. I told my friends what was happening and they got scared. He hadn't seen me up there, which was good. So we made a plan so I can get out of school without him seeing me. The moment the school bell rang, three of my friends got in front of me and I went down the school stairs behind them. They took me to my car and I managed to get in it without any problems and got home in peace. I didn't even look in the direction he was. When I got home, I went onto my Instagram because I was going to confront him, but I got surprised when I saw that he blocked me, which was a relief, but also made me think that he saw me after school and knew that I had seen him. I told my parents what happened, but there wasn't much that could be done. After that, he never showed up at church again. I don't know what he intended on happening by waiting for me in front of my school after I said no multiple times. I'm a 16 year old female. I have always been on the less cautious side when it comes to technology. Such a bad habit. But after this experience, I've definitely become more careful. 
Early this year, I was messaged by an account on Instagram. It had photos of a woman with her kids, just doing everyday things. I normally don't accept DMs from random accounts, but the account that messaged me was followed by my brother, so I didn't think much of it. The DM said something along the lines of, What would you do for $2,000? Right away, I figured it was something sketchy, but I went along with it. They asked me for my PayPal, which doesn't actually have any of my info in it. No bank card or anything, just my email. I really don't use PayPal at all. Out of curiosity, I gave it to them. They sent me screenshots of the money being sent and whatnot, and told me that all I needed to do was click on the link that was sent to my phone number. I wasn't sure what the link would do, and out of stupid curiosity, I clicked it. Immediately, my Instagram was logged off on my phone. Normally, I wouldn't be super upset if I lost my social media accounts. They don't matter that much to me. But this was my long-term account and the account I usually use to message my partner on. That being said, the account had some unholy pictures on it and personal information shared between me and my partner and some friends. I immediately panicked and messaged them on a separate account of mine, offering the account I was on which had a similar following and post count, and telling them that I was a minor and the account they had hacked had child pornography on it and that I would be contacting the police if they didn't give it back or delete the account. Of course, that didn't work. Around that same time, I called my partner and was basically freaking out because I have trauma around being exploited and the whole situation was really upsetting to me. He deleted any personal messages on his side and as I was trying to figure out how to get my account back, he got a message. He was sent a photo of me naked, which wasn't exactly a huge problem because the message was originally sent to him, but obviously the fact that they had it saved on their device and were willing to send it to people was a big issue. I messaged the account again, basically saying what the hell and telling them to delete the photo. They told me that they would send the pictures to everyone on my account if I didn't pay them $300 in the next 8 hours. My account has my family on it, including my mom and cousins. Not only did I not have $300 to my name, I also wasn't willing to fork it over to them when it was pretty obvious that they wouldn't give my account back either way. So I continued to find other ways to get my account back. They started making posts on my page, nothing too weird, just a normal average scammy. I just got 10k for doing this. Bullshit. At this point, I messaged people I was friends with on that account, asking them to block that account until everything was figured out, just in case. I started messing around with the person on it, which I knew was obviously not a good idea, and I put a stop to it as soon as I found out. And they were asked, Do you want to see my tits? And sent a less revealing but basically naked photo of me. The person on my account messaged me again, showing me screenshots of my friends being sent those pictures. Again, they threatened to show more if I didn't pay them $300, and I said no. Eventually, I found an alternative way to recover a hacked account, the face ID photo method, but I knew it would take at least a few hours to be approved. Luckily, while I was waiting, they didn't send any photos to anyone. The next day, it was approved and I got my account back. Ultimately, me getting hacked was my fault, and I'm not going to avoid that. But I do think that going out of their way to find those photos and threatening their 16-year-old girls with them to get money is disgusting. Super scary experience, but it taught me to be more careful. I've had a pretty scary dating app experience. One with a guy that looked nothing like his pictures. He used college day photos, his home looking like a torture house, ripped walls, window bars, and him making some really weird faces. The sexual questions was where I ran for it, blocked him after the red flags. Anyway, there's this girl I met a while ago. It never really got off my mind because of how strange she was. She and I met through a dating app, but whilst talking, she seemed interested exchanged phone numbers, and immediately chatted over the phone. Except she barely talked, if like ever. It was always like one or two words. That made me a little uncomfortable. Laughing it off was really all I could do. Well, I was like, yeah, I'll talk to you tomorrow. 
and that was where she tells me to stop. So, I did, as I was hoping that she would talk more about herself. Nope, it was just silence. Good God, I must not be in the right mind either, but I was like, let's FaceTime, because I was starting to question if she was the girl in her Facebook picture or not. Shockingly, she did, and it was her. Never seen such an expressionless face in my life, though. She looked like there was not an ounce of emotion in her. I don't think I've ever met anyone like that before. Anyways, I just go on to say how shocking it was because I was really thinking she wasn't the person in her pictures and how pretty she looked. She looked really tired though, could literally see the white portion of her bottom eye. She remained silent, which made me feel like there was no progress. So I asked her what she does for fun. She tells me that she likes to wait for the rain to come so that she could sit there and stare at it. What a huge red flag. I mean, not that it's inherently a bad thing to do, but the overall vibe was so off. Then I literally sit there in silence, expecting her to talk. 10 minutes go by. I compliment her piercing. I receive no response. I just hung up on her because I'm at the point where I'm like, this is just weird. She calls me back immediately, then asks me why I left her like that. I'm like, I barely know you. There's really no good communication here, so, yeah. As expected, silence. So I remind her, oh, there it is again, and she laughs at me. Her laugh wasn't even a laugh, more of a weird, short, sarcastic one. This started to make me question her sanity, or intention. I honestly thought she was possibly trolling. Anyways, she finally talked to me a bit about her life. It was short, but she lives alone, doesn't really like to talk, no shit, and had never had an interest in relationships, dating wise. I was cheering, telling her how happy I was that she said a full sentence. I know that's so rude to say, but oh my god, I've had better conversations with Siri and Alexa. She tells me to shut up, which was shocking, which I laughed at. She asked me if I had any hobbies. I told her I love art, cooking, and old movies. She said she loved horror movies, and she loved collecting knives. Oh lord, she had some giant ass knives. I was like, what the fuck? I happily told her that I thought it was awesome, because it was progress, but I was low-key terrified. Then silence. I swear to god, her stare was just so cold, and just creepy. So I told her, I have to work at 5am. Fake excuse, and said I had to leave. She told me not to, but I replied that I needed to. So I wished her a good night and left the call. Then I get a text from her at 5am, which I missed because I slept through. I texted back and asked if she slept. She told me she had insomnia and didn't sleep. I then got a phone call from her, which I answered, wishing her a good morning and asking her how her day went. She was quiet. I asked her if she muted herself and she just says no. I asked her what she thinks about me. She tells me that she doesn't know. So I asked her, what should I get to eat? She says, nothing. So I just awkwardly laugh it off. So then I asked her if she met anyone else on this app that we met on. She says no, and told me that they were all old. I laughed. I told her that I'm sorry to hear that. I still remember her showing me the knife collection. I remember one of them was a kitchen knife. Anyways, I was literally talking to myself, hoping she said something. And as expected, nothing. I'm literally awkward holding the phone in silence. Then I hear her singing. She actually had a nice voice and I just cheer. I tell her how happy I am. Just pure silence afterwards. She then asks me why I'm not at work. I told her I decided to skip. Then she says something that catches me off guard. Aw, for me? I tell her no. Then she calls me a bitch, which was somewhat funny considering she barely talks. Anyways. I tolerated her silence for two more days before blocking her. Did I dodge a possible psycho? I think yes. I'm a 38 year old male, recently separated. I moved back to India and got on the Bumble dating app. As I was married for nine years, I was very rusty as far as dating rituals go. I matched with Priya, a 38-year-old female. 
We chatted for a bit. We both lived in similar parts of Europe at different times in our lives. We also seemed to have a lot in common. Phone chats before we met. She would talk to me about four or five hours a day with very intricate and disturbing details of what happened in her marriage that did not last long to various abusive exes along the way. Trigger warning, alcoholism, date rape. The first date where we met in real life went spectacularly well. She came and stayed over with me at a swanky place that I booked. We stayed there for two days, seemed to have a natural ease in occupying each other's spaces. Every midnight, the landline at the hotel room would ring. The third day, I head back to the city, which is only 80 miles from hers. She calls me over the phone, wanting to know how far the bus ride to my house was, and casually says, I love you. I was taken aback, but didn't think too much of it at the time. This was followed in the days to come by, I want to marry you. I am yours forever. Anyway, our second day in real life, I head back to the city a week later, booked a rather basic place, very close to her place. At 1am, she gets a coffee craving. I call room service to order in, thinking that's what she wanted. No, let's walk to this 24 hour coffee shop a mile away. So yeah, the neighborhood, although fairly upscale, has loads of feral stray dogs on the streets, and many drunken men would come our way, pretending to be lost and asking for directions. She seemed to be enjoying it a lot. We have coffee at about 1.30am. She again wants to walk back. She takes me to a corner road and says, This is where a date didn't go well, and I was once groped. My legs were shaking at this point. We started walking further. We passed by a broken clay sculpture. She goes, I have a strong suspicion that this broken sculpture is possessed. I know all about it. My ex-husband's sisters were into witchcraft. We were finally back at the hotel about 2.30 a.m. We go to sleep. The landline in the hotel room rings incessantly. The next morning she calls a cab and goes back to her place. She texts me, I don't think I'm ready for a loving relationship yet. I head back to my city. I think about this incident a lot sometimes. It just refuses to leave me. I have disturbing fever dreams about my incidents that she narrated to me. I am unable to go on dates anymore. It's been two months since this happened. Hope I'll recover soon. Last week, I matched with this girl on Tinder. She was cute and we got along fairly well. I decided to go for it and asked her to meet up on Saturday. She said yes. I suggested to drive around town, but she insisted that we go over to her place instead. Without much thought, I agreed. I arrived around 9 p.m. This was about 20 minutes from town. The house seemed very unkempt, but I didn't think anything of it since there were many old houses in the area. There was only one streetlight near her house, and I parked near it. I texted her, letting her know that I was there, and she hearted the message. I knocked a few times, but there was no answer. I tried calling, but again, no answer. I then texted her that I was leaving, and I walked back to my car. Once inside, I saw messages asking where I was going, and to come back. I saw someone standing on the porch, but not from her house. It was from the house next door. They weren't there before I arrived and the shadowy figure was not the petite young girl. It seemed bulkier like a man. I freaked out a little and left. When I got back home, I saw that the profile had been deleted. I don't know what to think of it. It still gives me the creeps. I downloaded dating apps the past two years hoping to find the one from all over the world. It wasn't my idea at first to download it, but was my best friend's. So I did because I was desperate at the time since most of my friends were getting into relationships. I matched with a couple of guys on Tinder and some added me on Yobo and LitMatch. Some of them were just looking for a hookup or for nudes, so I stopped replying to them. Then there's this guy who was attractive and kind at the same time, at first. 
We got close and had going on contacting each other for almost two months. It got to the point where he asked me to be his girlfriend. I told him and explained that I think it's difficult at this point because he was still in college and I was in my senior year in high school. I admit I really wanted that to work but I think it's a rush decision. So I told him we could still be friends and when the time and situation is right we could be together. I wanted to be in a relationship so bad but two months since knowing each other is too early for me. He said he respects my decision but he can't remain friends. I was sad but I didn't want to force him to stay. So I moved on and I decided to stop and delete those dating apps cause I'm easily attached. We hadn't talked to each other for almost a month so I really thought he was really serious with moving on. A few weeks later I saw his account viewing my stories on Instagram so I was like okay maybe he was just checking if I was okay and it went on for almost 6 months he'd be the first to view it. I decided to lock my profile because I was getting uncomfortable and then I blocked his account. The next day a new account requested to follow me, zero followers and two or three following. I was getting a vibe that it was his, so I declined. Same goes on with my Twitter, Snapchat and Facebook. Anonymous accounts would follow me or add me and message me randomly. I started to get scared. I unblocked his account that I knew of and saw that he was following most of my friends including my sisters. There's this one friend I have that messaged me that someone sent him a screenshot of our convo so he asked me if I knew him. It was getting really awkward and scary so I asked him to block that account. I also told my other friends. One of my friends sent me a screenshot cause a certain account posted a picture of me when I saw it. It was me when both of us were on a video call. I felt cold and getting sick to my stomach. It's so fucking weird. I messaged him and told him to stop stalking me and posting my pictures. He didn't reply or anything. He did stop posting me but until now anonymous accounts are still following me on social media. Could I have possibly befriended a psycho or am I just overreacting? In 2019, I was just 15 years old and in high school. At one point, I received a request to follow on Instagram from a 25-year-old guy. He was not a stranger as he attended the same church as my family, but we weren't even friends. I only saw him once or twice and we never spoke. I was even surprised that he knew my name because even I didn't know his name until that moment. He always liked my photos, replied to my stories with compliments, but I always tried to ignore it as much as I could, or sometimes I would just say, thank you, and completely ignore any attempt for him to try to build a conversation, till one day he sent me DMs saying that he would like to get to know me better, and he would like to take me out for dinner or something. I obviously declined, and I was quite honest with him, and said that it would never work since I was underage, and that he should go look for someone his age. At the moment, I didn't want to sound rude as there was a high possibility of meeting him in church again and I wouldn't want to cause a strange atmosphere. That's why I didn't block him the first moment. After that, he seemed to be quiet until the day I made a post with my friends at school. We took a photo in the classroom and I made a big mistake of tagging the location in the photo, the location of my school. Minutes after that, he sent me a DM saying, Oh, I live very close to your school. I think about only five to seven minutes away. I didn't answer. At the moment, it didn't cross my mind that this is a risk I could be taking. That same day, he continued to ask me if I would like to hang out with him after school and that he could take me to lunch. And once again, I politely declined. I was getting annoyed by this point. My parents weren't enjoying the situation either and told me that they wanted to confront him about it. But I didn't want any problems or being a target of comments in church as gossip often spreads quickly over there. I believed that ignoring it was the best way, but it wasn't. The next day our biology teacher had to leave school due to an emergency, so we had the last class time vacant. My friends and I took our bags and went to the top floor of school where we had a complete view of the school entrance. 
We stood there watching the street movement while we talked. That's when I noticed a man leaning against a silver car in a more secluded corner of the street, but I could see perfectly who it was. At first, I didn't believe it, so I went on his Instagram profile because I had remembered that he had some pictures with his car in it. I just wanted to make sure that it was the same one that I was seeing. To my misfortune, it was the same car. So I took my phone and zoomed in on the face and had confirmation of what I already knew. It was him. I told my friends what was happening and they got scared. He hadn't seen me up there, which was good. So we made a plan so I can get out of school without him seeing me. The moment the school bell rang, three of my friends got in front of me and I went down the school stairs behind them. They took me to my car and I managed to get in it without any problems and got home in peace. I didn't even look in the direction he was. When I got home, I went onto my Instagram because I was going to confront him, but I got surprised when I saw that he blocked me, which was a relief, but also made me think that he saw me after school and knew that I had seen him. I told my parents what happened, but there wasn't much that could be done. After that, he never showed up at church again. I don't know what he intended on happening by waiting for me in front of my school after I said no multiple times. I'm a 16 year old female. I have always been on the less cautious side when it comes to technology. Such a bad habit. But after this experience, I've definitely become more careful. Earlier this year, I was messaged by an account on Instagram. It had photos of a woman with her kids, just doing everyday things. I normally don't accept DMs from random accounts, but the account that messaged me was followed by my brother, so I didn't think much of it. The DM said something along the lines of, What would you do for $2,000? Right away, I figured it was something sketchy, but I went along with it. They asked me for my PayPal, which doesn't actually have any of my info in it. No bank card or anything, just my email. I really don't use PayPal at all. Out of curiosity, I gave it to them. They sent me screenshots of the money being sent and whatnot and told me that all I needed to do was click on the link that was sent to my phone number. I wasn't sure what the link would do, and out of stupid curiosity, I clicked it. Immediately, my Instagram was logged off on my phone. Normally, I wouldn't be super upset if I lost my social media accounts. They don't matter that much to me, but this was my long-term account, and the account I usually use to message my partner on. That being said, the account had some unholy pictures on it and personal information shared between me and my partner and some friends. I immediately panicked and messaged them on a separate account of mine, offering the account I was on, which had a similar following and post count, and telling them that I was a minor and the account they had hacked had child pornography on it and that I would be contacting the police if they didn't give it back or delete the account. Of course, that didn't work. Around that same time, I called my partner and was basically freaking out because I have trauma around being exploited and the whole situation was really upsetting to me. He deleted any personal messages on his side and as I was trying to figure out how to get my account back, he got a message. He was sent a photo of me naked, which wasn't exactly a huge problem because the message was originally sent to him. But obviously, the fact that they had it saved on their device and were willing to send it to people was a big issue. I messaged the account again, basically saying what the hell and telling them to delete the photo. They told me that they would send the pictures to everyone on my account if I didn't pay them $300 in the next 8 hours. My account has my family on it, including my mom and cousins. Not only did I not have $300 to my name, I also wasn't willing to fork it over to them when it was pretty obvious that they wouldn't give my account back either way. So I continued to find other ways to get my account back. They started making posts on my page, nothing too weird, just a normal average scammy. I just got 10k for doing this. Bullshit. At this point, I messaged people I was friends with on that account, asking them to block that account until everything was figured out, just in case and started messing around with the person on it, which I knew was obviously not a good idea, and I put a stop to it as soon as I found out, and they were asked, do you want to see my tits? And sent a less revealing but basically naked photo of me. 
The person on my account messaged me again, showing me screenshots of my friends being sent those pictures. Again, they threatened to show more if I didn't pay them $300, and I said no. Eventually, I found an alternative way to recover a hacked account, the face ID photo method, but I knew it would take at least a few hours to be approved. Luckily, while I was waiting, they didn't send any photos to anyone. The next day, it was approved and I got my account back. Ultimately, me getting hacked was my fault and I'm not going to avoid that. But I do think that going out of their way to find those photos and threatening their 16 year old girls with them to get money is disgusting. Super scary experience, but it taught me to be more careful. I've had a pretty scary dating app experience. One with a guy that looked nothing like his pictures. He used college day photos. His home looking like a torture house, ripped walls, window bars, and him making some really weird faces. The sexual questions was where I ran for it, blocked him after the red flags. Anyway, there's this girl I met a while ago. It never really got off my mind because of how strange she was. She and I met through a dating app but whilst talking, she seemed interested, exchanged phone numbers, and immediately chatted over the phone. Except she barely talked, if like ever. It was always like one or two words. That made me a little uncomfortable. Laughing it off was really all I could do. Well, I was like, yeah, I'll talk to you tomorrow. And that was where she tells me to stop. So I did, as I was hoping that she would talk more about herself. Nope, it was just silence. Good God, I must not be in the right mind either, but I was like, let's FaceTime, because I was starting to question if she was the girl in her Facebook picture or not. Shockingly, she did, and it was her. Never seen such an expressionless face in my life, though. She looked like there was not an ounce of emotion in her. I don't think I've ever met anyone like that before. Anyways, I just go on to say how shocking it was because I was really thinking she wasn't the person in her pictures and how pretty she looked. She looked really tired though, could literally see the white portion of her bottom eye. She remained silent, which made me feel like there was no progress. So I asked her what she does for fun. She tells me that she likes to wait for the rain to come so that she could sit there and stare at it. What a huge red flag. I mean, not that it's inherently a bad thing to do, but the overall vibe was so off. Then I literally sit there in silence, expecting her to talk. Ten minutes go by. I compliment her piercing. I receive no response. I just hung up on her because I'm at the point where I'm like, this is just weird. She calls me back immediately, then asks me why I left her like that. I'm like, I barely know you. There's really no good communication here, so, yeah. As expected, silence. So I remind her, oh, there it is again, and she laughs at me. Her laugh wasn't even a laugh, more of a weird, short, sarcastic one. This started to make me question her sanity, or intention. I honestly thought she was possibly trolling. Anyways, she finally talked to me a bit about her life. It was short. But she lives alone, doesn't really like to talk, no shit, and had never had an interest in relationships, dating-wise. I was cheering, telling her how happy I was that she said a full sentence. I know that's so rude to say, but oh my god, I've had better conversations with Siri and Alexa. She tells me to shut up, which was shocking, which I laughed at. She asked me if I had any hobbies. I told her I love art, cooking, and old movies. She said she loved horror movies, and she loved collecting knives. Oh lord, she had some giant ass knives. I was like, what the fuck? I happily told her that I thought it was awesome, because it was progress, but I was low-key terrified. Then silence. I swear to god, her stare was just so cold, and just creepy. So I told her, I have to work at 5am. Fake excuse, and said I had to leave. She told me not to, but I replied that I needed to. So I wished her a good night and left the call. Then I get a text from her at 5 a.m., which I missed because I slept through. I texted back and asked if she slept. She told me she had insomnia and didn't sleep. 
I then got a phone call from her, which I answered, wishing her a good morning and asking her how her day went. She was quiet. I asked her if she muted herself and she just says no. I asked her what she thinks about me. She tells me that she doesn't know. So I asked her what should I get to eat. She says nothing. So I just awkwardly laugh it off. So then I asked her if she met anyone else on this app that we met on. She says no and told me that they were all old. I laughed. I told her that I'm sorry to hear that. I still remember her showing me the knife collection. I remember one of them was a kitchen knife. Anyways, I was literally talking to myself, hoping she said something. And as expected, nothing. I'm literally awkward, holding the phone in silence. Then I hear her singing. She actually had a nice voice, and I just cheer. I tell her how happy I am, just pure silence afterwards. She then asked me why I'm not at work. I told her I decided to skip. Then she says something that catches me off guard. Aw, for me? I tell her no. Then she calls me a bitch, which was somewhat funny considering she barely talks. Anyways, I tolerated her silence for two more days before blocking her. Did I dodge a possible psycho? I think yes. I'm a 38 year old male, recently separated. I moved back to India and got on the Bumble dating app. As I was married for 9 years, I was very rusty as far as dating rituals go. I matched with Priya, a 38 year old female. We chatted for a bit. We both lived in similar parts of Europe at different times in our lives. We also seemed to have a lot in common. Phone chats before we met. She would talk to me about 4 or 5 hours a day with very intricate and disturbing details of what happened in her marriage that did not last long to various abusive exes along the way. Trigger warning, alcoholism, date rape. The first date where we met in real life went spectacularly well. She came and stayed over with me at a swanky place that I booked. We stayed there for two days, seemed to have a natural ease in occupying each other's spaces. Every midnight, the landline at the hotel room would ring. The third day, I head back to the city, which is only 80 miles from hers. She calls me over the phone, wanting to know how far the bus ride to my house was, and casually says, I love you. I was taken aback, but didn't think too much of it at the time. This was followed in the days to come by, I want to marry you. I am yours forever. Anyway, our second day in real life, I headed back to the city a week later, booked a rather basic place, very close to her place. At 1am, she gets a coffee craving. I call room service to order in, thinking that's what she wanted. No, let's walk to this 24 hour coffee shop a mile away. So yeah, the neighborhood although fairly upscale, has loads of feral stray dogs on the streets and many drunken men would come our way, pretending to be lost and asking for directions. She seemed to be enjoying it a lot. We have coffee at about 1.30am. She again wants to walk back. She takes me to a corner road and says, This is where a date didn't go well and I was once groped. My legs were shaking at this point. We started walking further. We passed by a broken clay sculpture. She goes, I have a strong suspicion that this broken sculpture is possessed. I know all about it. My ex-husband's sisters were into witchcraft. We were finally back at the hotel about 2.30 a.m. We go to sleep. The landline in the hotel room rings incessantly. The next morning she calls a cab and goes back to her place. She texts me, I don't think I'm ready for a loving relationship yet. I head back to my city. I think about this incident a lot sometimes. It just refuses to leave me. I have disturbing fever dreams about my incidents that she narrated to me. I am unable to go on dates anymore. It's been two months since this happened. Hope I'll recover soon. I actually have two dating stories that should be pretty quick, hopefully, and they're not necessarily horror as in scary, but they're horror in the sense that they were horrifying and turned me off online dating pretty much altogether. 
I don't think much backstory is really needed for me, beyond the fact that I was in my mid-twenties, have never really had luck with meeting people that I care to really spend time with, and I wasn't exactly picky with who I swiped match on. When I say that I wasn't picky, I mean that as long as they were a guy above a 2 on a scale of 10, and didn't throw out any major super creep vibes, I was pretty willing to give them a try. I know that this may sound pretty dumb to some people, but I'm the kind of person that is really willing to give anyone a shot to see if we vibe, if that makes sense. Anyways, on to the first date story. I had matched with a guy named Jake on one of the apps, and he seemed like a pretty straightforward guy. His profile was your basic mid-twenties dude that was into tech and fitness, two things that were actually bonuses for me. He and I spoke for a while, sent a few photos, had a few phone calls, and he was pretty much the most average guy I've ever spoken with. I was totally okay with average. In fact, that's kind of what I was looking for more than anything. We agreed to meet up for lunch at a small diner-like restaurant, and we set a date. The day comes, I show up first, and I get the table for the two of us. As I'm sitting there, just waiting, I get a text from Jake saying that he's had some car troubles and that he's going to be a few minutes late, but he was 100% not ghosting me. That was fine with me. I get it. I've had my shares of why won't my rust bucket start moments. I tell him I'm at the table, and that it's totally fine, that I understand, and so forth and so on. After about 20 or so more minutes, he finally does walk into the restaurant and to our table. But he looks like he's having a panic attack. He's sweating. It was early spring, so it was still pretty chilly outside, and he just looked distressed and disheveled overall. He sits down, and immediately just kind of looks like he's lost all sense of the situation. Like something has happened, and he's freaking out. But he can't make it not obvious that he's freaking out. I ask him if he's okay and what's going on, and he kind of just starts looking at me like he's about to start sobbing. As soon as this happens... I hear shouting. I see several cops running into the restaurant, telling him to get down on his knees and subsequently arresting him. It took me a few minutes to convince them that I was already there at the restaurant and that I was not with him prior to the minute he walked in. Thankfully, the host and server could vouch for me on this. As come to find out, on his way to the date... And Mr. Jake had actually hit someone with his car and then kept going. I don't mean like he sideswiped or bumped somebody else's vehicle. I mean he literally hit a person and ran over their leg, causing major injury and then kept going to meet up with me at the restaurant. I'm assuming I was supposed to be an alibi, or I guess I would have been if he hadn't already been being followed and looked for by the police. So... Obviously, that date ended pretty quickly with him being shoved in the back of a police cruiser and me just staring at the floor like, what the hell am I doing with my life? Thankfully, the waiter was sympathetic and she didn't make me pay for my drink, which was nice. I guess at least I got a free Dr. Pepper out of the situation. And the second one is one that's not necessarily scary, but it's still what I would consider a dating horror story. It was, once again, a story where I met up with a guy that I had met on one of those dating apps. This one was a dude named Chris. Chris's profile was a bit above the others that I looked at on the apps, because Chris was actually really attractive, and he was all about staying fit, as he claimed he was former military. Now, I've never been with a military guy, but I do know a few of them. My brother, for one. And I have found that most of them are fairly tolerable, and even pretty fun to hang out with. Talking with Chris went pretty smoothly, at first, though he seemed to have a really strict, 
I can't chat with you before 8 p.m. kind of schedule about him. Which, admittedly, had me initially concerned that he may have been a married man looking for an affair. I figured I would at least see it through to the first date, and see if I could spot an indentation on his ring finger, or try to ask him what it was all about. I mean, it could have been that he had a job that he worked until then and couldn't have his phone with him. Or maybe he just had other adult responsibilities that he had to see to. I was willing to be patient with him and to get answers, so we scheduled a date for dinner. That 8pm rule made it kind of hard to do anything else, and I was looking forward to it. Once again, I was early to the date, and I got a table for us. Then, when he finally shows up to the date, he walks in with another woman. I was a bit confused and taken aback, thinking he really had the audacity to bring someone else to a date like that, but it was even more awkward when he sat down and said, It's very nice to finally meet you in person. This is my mother. This man literally brought his mother on the date without warning me. Now, mind you, if his mother had needed his care or been disabled, I would have had no issue with it, assuming he probably would have informed me beforehand. But this woman was quite fit and definitely able to take care of herself, and she was definitely there because she wanted to be there, which was even weirder. At no point did Chris stop and think or act like this was a weird thing. He just kept up the conversation as if she wasn't there. Then, it hit the apex of, oh my god, this is so freaking awkward, when it came time to order. He tried to order one thing, and his mother told him no. Then, told the waiter something else. When the waiter walked away... He tried to tell his mom that he wanted the other thing, almost whining like a little kid. But she told him that it was too fatty and that he needed to watch his carbs. I just kind of sat there like, what? Was this woman really ordering for her adult, former military son like this while he was on a date with another woman? Again, I know that this wasn't scary, but it was definitely my nope. I'm done with this moment. The entire date was so strange, and I pretty much ghosted him after this. I tried to think that maybe I was just being shallow about the whole thing, but it was too much. Chris was actually my last date through any of those apps, and I kind of just embraced being single for a while, for reasons that I think are pretty obvious. The story is really reaching back to a time before all the dating sites were really a thing, and way before smartphones and apps were the center of our lives. Back then, before everything was so simplified, I used to be a longtime member of a certain IRC. For the kids out there, that's Internet Relay Chat Room. These were chat rooms that were more or less embedded on websites and they were pretty much anonymous, in the fact that all you really had to have was a display name, and not much else. Hell, most of them had a feature that would let you join in as an unnamed guest, and the rooms would sometimes be filled with guest 04235 and such. They were a lot of fun, and I kind of miss those days, but nowadays the internet is all about look at me specifically, so... The idea of anonymity being a core concept is relegated to pretty much just the dark web. Now, despite the fact that there was this layer of anonymity with IRC chat rooms, it was actually quite common to quote unquote find love while chatting with these people. There was a direct messaging system too, so you could have conversations one on one, and you could get to know the person on the other end pretty well. 
even if there was no way to confirm literally anything they told you or said. I'm certain that some of the people I spoke with that were interested in me were probably 60-year-old guys pretending to be women in their 20s. And that's okay. I could safely say that this was a long time ago, or that that was the old me. <laughs> now, there was one person that I spoke with in these chat rooms that I actually did have a bit of a relationship with, albeit only for a couple of months. Her username was the title to an Evanescence song, with some X's and numbers thrown in the mix, but I can safely say that her actual name was Taylor. Taylor was a year older than me at the time. I was 21 and she had just turned 22 when we met and had started speaking. I don't remember why we started talking one-on-one, -on -one, but we did. And after a while, things seemed to get to a point where we both wanted to start a relationship. Now, long-distance relationships back then were a bit different than what they are in 2023. Long-distance phone calls were expensive, and cell phones had set text and talk minutes, so it wasn't like you could be as close to the other person as you can in the current year. Because of this, we had our IRC conversations, and we also had emailed each other a few times. And... Before anybody mentions that Taylor was probably one of the 60-year-old men that liked to roleplay as a young woman, I actually knew that Taylor was legit. We had sent pictures to each other, including pics to prove that we were real. This was essentially a picture with the date, time, and our username written on our hands in Sharpie and covering one of our eyes. Yes, things were that complex back then. You had to be creative to come up with something that was difficult to fake, to prove that you were who you said you were. Now, all of this is to say that Taylor was gorgeous. She was exactly what you would think of when I say, 22-year-old girl with an Evanescence username that likes to talk in IRC rooms. Dyed black hair, bright blue eyes, liked the color black on everything, had a few face piercings... And let me tell you, I instantly fell in love with her. I even told her that she was literally the girl I was looking for in life, and she thought that that was the funniest thing ever. From there, we did say that we were dating, actually. We would chat every night, send pictures of ourselves through email, and while things never went past PG-13, this was the happiest I had ever been in my life. We had our little relationship for almost three months on the dot, and everything seemed great, until there was a stretch of time that she just didn't log in. I didn't see her in our chat rooms, and I would email her, but she wouldn't reply. I was genuinely upset, thinking maybe something happened to her, maybe she wasn't really as interested in me as she had claimed. I was almost heartbroken, thinking I had messed this up, and that this was a once-in-a-lifetime thing that I had just ruined. I kept emailing her every night, just hoping she would see them or maybe send a response like, Oh, my internet was out for a few days, sorry about that. Or, I was out of town. I was basically holding out hope that she would say anything to bring it back together. And then... I did get a response, but it was a rather strange one. It was just, hey, hop on IRC. It actually made me almost giddy to hear from her again, so I did what she requested and logged in. Immediately, she sent me a DM saying hello. I replied, asking how she was and if she was okay. She completely ignored those messages and just said, what's your address? I want to send you something. I have to pause here to say that I was dumb, and I was in love with this girl, so I didn't hesitate at all in giving this random internet person my address. Nowadays, I would be lambasted for doing something so stupid, and rightfully so, but 
back then, there really wasn't this concept of internet strangers are not your friend. So I responded to her, told her my address, thinking that this was maybe the start of us moving into something a little more serious. And of course, the response that I got back was not what I expected, nor what I wanted. The message that I got back from Taylor was clear as day, and I actually remember it word for word. <laughs> this is Taylor's husband. Stop messaging my girl, or else you'll be next. And that was it. What I would be next for was anybody's guess, but this was pretty clearly a threat. I mentioned that she never told me she was married, and then mentioned that she and I were really good friends, and if he was really her husband, I would respect that. After a few moments of silence, they logged out of the account, leaving me confused, devastated, and just overall feeling kind of betrayed. That was the last time that I ever spoke with that account. They never logged back into the server, and Taylor never responded to any of my emails. So, that was effectively the end of my relationship, but not the end of the story. About two weeks later, I actually got a package at my house. The return address just said Taylor. There was no address or city or anything like that, it was just her name. I hesitated to opening it, thinking that it was going to be something messed up, and, well, it was. When I opened the box and moved all the packing materials, there at the bottom of the box was a kitchen knife, and on the blade of the kitchen knife was a hard, crusty, brown-red substance that I assume was blood. I immediately called the police, asking them to send an officer to my house because I had gotten a package with a potential murder weapon. That was a really fun story to try to explain to the officer when he got there, not going to lie. I had to tell him that I had met a girl on the internet, and that we were dating, but then her real-life husband had threatened me after I gave him my address, and then today the package showed up. I feel like if I had to tell this story to an officer this year, it would be less strange but back in 2003, it was like explaining foreign concepts, and they had a lot of questions. I ended up having to go to the station to pretty much be interrogated, and after answering questions for about four hours, they decided that I was probably telling the truth, and they took the knife, saying that they would look further into it. I don't know what they were looking into. All I had was her first name, online username and a picture of her. <laughs> I have no idea if their investigation ever went anywhere, nor do I know if that blood was human, but it was definitely sent to me as a threat, and it told me what he meant when he said I was next. All of this was 20 years ago, and looking back, I do kind of miss the old internet. Hopefully this can trigger some nostalgia for your older audience and maybe educate your younger audience on how things used to be. Remember kids, don't tell strangers where you live, or you may end up with a bloody knife in your mailbox.